Hi everyone, I'm Sean, and welcome to The 101. So the last couple episodes, we've been talking about malware, the different types of malware, and generally how it works. I've also mentioned how, despite the fact that we know all this, and have been battling this threat for more or less a couple decades now, we still get burned by malware on a pretty regular basis. As a result, a question keeps bubbling up to the surface, and it's the topic of today's episode. Today we ask, why is malware still successful? So you might think that in a bits and bytes, on-off world of computers, we'd have a pretty straightforward way of figuring out if a file was good or bad. Well, not exactly. Now we can figure out what a file is pretty well, but determining intent, it's about as tricky as figuring out the intent of, well, a human. So if we're gonna try to figure out why malware is still successful, we need to first understand what we do to figure out what malware is in the first place. Malware is able to run despite the presence of antivirus because the makers of malware know how to evade its primary technique static analysis. Malware can bypass static analysis by masking or completely changing aspects of itself to prevent antivirus from seeing its true nature or from scanning it at all. So way back in the early days of networking, computers were designed to connect and communicate under two basic principles, make it easy and make it fast. To accomplish that, a simple paradigm was set in place. Trust what comes your way. This wasn't a problem when networks were small and isolated, but the internet we know and love today is built on the same paradigm. When criminals started exploiting that paradigm, we were too far down the rabbit hole to redesign the entire system. As a response, we came up with the approach of blacklisting. Now, blacklisting is great in theory. If we know a file is bad, then we can check it against all other incoming files to know if it is also bad. Even better, we can do this without running the file at all. We can look at the file's properties to see if it matches even if on the surface it looks perfectly normal. But criminals are nothing if they're not enterprising, and they soon figured out how to bypass it completely. How, you might ask? Let's talk about packing. So the basic premise behind packing is the same one behind zipping files, compression. To oversimplify just a bit, compression works by either removing unnecessary data, like reducing the quality of an MP3, or by removing redundant data, which can be reassembled later. That latter approach is how we zip files and turn this into something like this. It's a lot smaller, huh? Well, this same process is what malware packing does to bypass traditional defenses. You see, the output of taking lots of big files and making them into one smaller file is a brand new file. And that brand new file shares none of the properties of the contents within. The packed malware can slip right past static analysis because it doesn't share any of the properties of the malicious code within. Then the two of this one-two punch occurs when the file decompresses in memory. Here, malware is able to persist and continue its endeavors without actually installing a new file. Okay, so what did we learn today? Well, malware is the tool that criminals use to carry out their malicious endeavors. It's not static, constantly evolving and always being innovated upon. While good in theory, the static analysis used by traditional antivirus has a serious catch-22. It can only stop bad files if it already knows the file is bad. If it's never seen the file before, it has no recourse to stop it at all. That's why techniques like malware packing are so successful at bypassing traditional defenses. All I need to do is tweak my malware just a little bit to bypass that initial analysis. And I can often do so in such a way that I can then carry out my attack without being noticed in the future. And it's one of the main reasons why we need to shift to a next generation platform that monitors behavior and not just simple files. Well, that's our time for today. Thanks for watching. And join us next week as we start to dive deeper into the different types of malware. Of course, if you have questions, we want to hear about them. Tweet us at carbonblack underscore ink and use the hashtag the 101 or email us at the 101 at carbonblack.com. My name's Sean. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next week.